Hey Red Bags, it's Jay today giving you the perfect start to Nightingale. My first three and a half hours in the full game condensed down into about 30 minutes of top tips. I've sunk 80 hours into a special preview build, but this is now the full game with all the launch changes. So a big shout out to Inflection, making this video even more perfect is a sponsorship from them. You can go and pick up Nightingale on Steam or the Epic Game Store for $30 right now. You'll find a link in the description box and the comment section, really help me out make sure you click on it and go and check out and see if the game is for you. Remember Nightingale is a 1-6 to six player co-op game, you can play solo or with your friends and not have to worry about a persistent world. Go and explore different realms, come back together on the same realm, I'll be talking a lot more about that in today's guide as well. And if you want to see me play this live, literally the minute this video has gone live on YouTube, I should be streaming on Twitch. Come and follow me, come and check me out as you can gain Twitch drops also. Twitch TV forward slash Jade plays games and let's go. The perfect start to Nightingale. Let's get right into the action, skipping the character customization and the first couple realms. We're in the swamp and I'm giving you some top tips before we progress. If you want larger health pools, make sure you've got a good meat diet as opposed to vegetables, which are gonna help increase your stamina regen. A mixture of both is probably good, but sometimes you may just want to be a bit more tankier, so try and eat three different pieces of meat, as they often have extra attributes that can all be applied. And never eat anything raw, always cook it, even blueberries, you can cook berries and they'll give you better buffs, and likewise mixing berries or vegetables together is better than eating just one single one raw. You don't need two different types of vegetables to make mixed plants, they can be exactly the same and it will just give you a better bath. Speaking of buffs, do make sure you're well rested often and when you're done with your camping gear, go ahead and dismantle it so that you're not wasting any resources before going on to the next realm or area. As long as you dismantle it in build mode, you'll get all your resources back. If an enemy destroys it or something happens due to instability, you will lose some of the resources. As you progress deeper in the game, do keep checking your challenges tab. This will have a list of things that you've completed, like being able to dodge, block and shove, and you can see there's a little green tick next to it and a chest. You get rewards. Most of it is essence dust, but some of them will give you either potions or maybe even higher tier essence. So do keep an eye on this. If there's something you can work out you can get pretty easily, then go and do it and get that extra essence dust. As part of the tutorial, when you explore the swamp, you'll see two towers. Do go and explore these massively and pick up all the different ingots and other items around. And it is just a rule of thumb. Pretty much any large size point of interest is going to have some sort of item that you can loot, whether it's an actual chest full of goodies like potions or just maybe some resources lying around. Some of the smaller locations like statues might only have maybe one piece of quartz but a free resource without having to mine or harvest is still a free resource. These particular towers are absolutely essential that you go and explore. Picking up that potion will come in handy, in fact it's a bottle of wine, as it really helps with your health. You'll have to basically take down a site of power as part of the tutorial and it will definitely help for that, so save it for then. Remember you can build pretty much in every structure that you come across a point of interest and make it part of your base. And at the top of both of these towers you should find chests filled with at least a umbrella so that you can glide safely down whenever you're ready. This gives you a good opportunity to take a look and see where the Fey Tower is, although it should be appearing on your map by now. Momentum can mean that sometimes if you pull your umbrella out too late you'll still take some sort of damage. So gauge it right and obviously make sure you don't run out of stamina before you get too close to ground as you don't want a sprained or broken ankle. It's easy to forget your sails and this is pretty much the only thing that will cure it in the early game. If you have a sprained ankle it takes a lot longer to move around and if you've got a broken ankle then you won't be able to run or even jump. These debuffs will appear above your health bar in the bottom left. And don't forget to utilise your little spring. While you've got a lot of stamina in these starting realms, you can get across places a lot quicker, especially avoiding some of the water. In the later swamps, you will get the blight disease as well, which affects you with your stamina and I think your health. And obviously being wet can also slow you down and your stamina region. So get used to having your knife out and tapping whatever button it is on the keyboard. For controller, it's LT to dodge forward. The tutorial byways you will not be able to return to, so make sure you haven't done anything and left a bunch of wood or essences or fibres laying around somewhere. 
You can't really unlock any crafting recipes in this realm, so you shouldn't have really been able to build a base. But you certainly might have decided to go and just chop every tree going, and yeah, you're probably well over encumbered. Once you've defeated the bound, just like the tutorial shows you, you can obviously go through. Whenever you're using a fey made portal, be aware that every time you change it up and mix a new set of cards in, then more bounds have the chance of appearing. They won't appear if you're just reopening the same portal to the same realm that you've previously opened, only the first time that you try different cards. And they won't spawn at all at any of the small crude ones that you'll be able to make later. Think carefully about what abeyance realm you want. You do get the choice out of swamp, desert or forest. There are bonuses and buffs, but also negative effects depending on which one you choose. You are going to be spending your first couple of hours really here. It can absolutely be your port of call where you build your first base and your first realm respite. And yeah, you'll be spending a lot of time here clearing out dungeons to unlock different realm cards to go and explore the next higher up ones. So the desert, I decided to choose this because I'd already chosen the forest a bunch of times and I figured I'd be able to see things a lot clearer, which is true. That's one benefit the desert has. You can really tell where stuff is a lot sooner. It's not hidden in forests or murky, murky water, apart from some of these sand cliffs. First thing you should do, no matter what realm you spawn in, is check where the essence trader is and the first site of power. Don't head to the Fey portal, you won't need that yet, unless you really want to make sure you've got your base built up first. I would recommend going to the Essence Trader and seeing what else you can actually get along the way. Preference of mine, since I've played so many times now, is I actually don't like placing a base down until I've completed the first site of power. I'm going to use where the Essence Trader is and the NPC that you have to talk to as my temporary base right outside it so that I can complete it nice and easy and then decide where to move and if I want to be so close to a fey made portal. As long as you picked up an umbrella though from one of them towers before, you should be absolutely fine from the consequences of being overheated. You will get picks later on that will help you be able to clamber up the walls, but honestly sometimes it's better just to go round some of these larger cliffs and try and skate it, especially as your stamina will get used up super quick while climbing and you'll often fall and break a leg. So them sites of power in this abeyance realm will be indicated by these barriers. You don't really find these barriers anywhere else. This is all part of the gentle learning curve in showing that you've got to be at the right gear level before gaining access to then unlock the rewards, which like I said, are usually the access to the higher or next level realms. You should find maybe the Provisioner, the Hunt, Astrolabe, I do believe, all on this same actual map and you have to complete them with the right gear level and then hopefully you'll be able to go ahead and start crafting cards to go and visit them later. But for now, definitely stop by and pick up anything you might find in chess. And despite your very low encumbrance, do keep picking up as much fiber, twigs and rocks as possible, although don't waste too much time mining. This wall can be all broken down into essence dust and make your life a lot quicker and easier by just buying a lot of the things that you need from the essence trader. If you spend a lot of time completing all the different encounters, which are basically like the puzzle monuments or defending against a certain bound, then you will definitely get a nice selection of rewards. That will be some of the crafting benches, augments, charms and more. Otherwise, you can just simply go and buy it all from the trader. And yes, Canute does appear on other maps, not just the forest. I've done a video on how to fight him. Go and check it out if you want more details. Last thing to mention about some of these points of interest, because they are part of the kind of story and progression on the Abeyance Realm, you're basically unlocking progressing to the further realms. They won't necessarily appear until they go in the right order. So obviously it stopped me here, but normally once you go and complete a Fey Tower on any of the other realms, it reveals all points of interest on the map. So it might be the first thing you should do whenever you go to a realm, go and find the Fey Tower. They're pretty easy to spot, they're pretty unique, they do stick out quite a lot. But these domes that you'll find in every Abeyance Realm, no matter what biome you choose, they are specifically for making progress in unlocking the next tier of cards to unlock the next realms. When you've cleared out one of these encounters, and that's what I call them, it's either a puzzle where you've got to choose the plimps or choose the right runes or defend yourself against the bound, do make sure you spend a bit of time looking at the favour that appears. 
These are temporary buffs, basically giving you either ability to jump really high, they may give you more strength or more endurance. You just have to let them cycle through just like I did there and choose what buff you want and then you can see it appearing on the bottom left. This might be fixed by the time everyone else plays it, but there is an option to make the HUD stay on permanently. By default it will fade, but there's already been a bit of criticism that it fades too quickly. So do check the settings and you can adjust this. Them little critters you see, just like in the previous playtest, you can actually kill them and harvest them for some meat and hide. For some reason if you've got a stuck in your abeyance realm, even before you've put a cairn stone down, and this applies to all realms, it will respawn you at the same point that you started on the map. This will come in handy because my plan is to go to this tower of power and complete the guide and tutorial and then I want to go all the way back to the southwest to where the fey portal is. That's a lot of distance to cover so instead once I've done my business I'm just going to respawn using the map feature and it will take me back to pretty much the middle of the map at least and save me walking. Remember you can always choose in your map to return to respite and it will always put you exactly back on your home realm respite unless you've crafted an item that you can respawn at that item to go and do boss fights which is the fairy ring. You'll gain this recipe as a reward for completing part of these challenges in unlocking some of them domed areas. So it's super useful for taking on bosses or particularly hard dungeons just to plonk the respawn. There's no teleporting, there's no fast travel on any of these maps because they're large but they are doable to get across and of course you can always use minor cards to help with speed and traversal. Most creatures will kind of leave you alone as long as you run away quick enough they just won't bother following you. Some creatures I find still have amazing aggro like wolves. Sometimes it is better just to run and make sure you've got all your food healed up and some of your potions ready to go as you don't be messing around your inventory while you're getting your face ripped off by some locusts. I know, I know, obvious tips for a hardcore pro gamer that you don't need, but you never know. All these big tall structures you're seeing, they often have lots of loot, especially some of the taller ones. Actually when you come up to it, it usually will pop up and say that this is maybe a bastion of uh, endurance or bastion of agility. If you look on the map and that's popped up, it means that there is going to be some loot chests on top of some of these structures, so it's probably worth climbing and seeing what you can find. So the Realmic Transmuters, these are the ones that you can find normally on top of the Fey Towers, but you can find them on their own occasionally as well in certain realms. Otherwise you will be able to craft your own and place it down. It's a good idea to always keep the materials on you, so dismantle it and then take it to the next realm so you can place and start one up straight away. Otherwise you may have a bit of a trek to find the Fey Tower or to come across one in the wild. This is where we're going to play our first minor card and I'm going to change it so that I get lots of essence. I've already picked up a bunch of cards just by looting all of the boxes that I found in amongst them ruins and points of interest. Check out my preview guide where I took a look at a lot of the minor cards explaining how they all work. But I will just give you the brief heads up. With these minor cards a lot of them have different levels and they basically give stronger results. These minor cards will last as long as this realm is up and if you revisit it nothing will change until a player goes and changes the minor card or you play a cleansing card that gets rid of all the effects and restores it back to the original. But the down low is that they often have really good buffs but they often also come with some sort of negative. So read carefully the cards that you're about to place. Some creatures in Nightingale just really aren't worth your time, especially the amount of effort you're going to put into killing them, and some creatures can run away from you, just like this Treant character here. So until you get a ranged weapon, which will be the Slingshot, don't bother attacking them, unless you're a bit quicker than me. So once you always come across some NPCs, make sure you talk to them obviously and make sure you go through all the options. Sometimes I've noticed some of the progression ones with the little white icon, they'll be right at the bottom of the screen, you might have to scroll down, otherwise that's how you can miss getting into the next phase. Here's where you're going to pick up your follower. Now the followers have been mocked somewhat for basically being walking baggage and burning up all your precious wood at the wrong time but they have got some great uses so definitely do the quest here which basically means you have to refill all these blueprints and then you'll be able to recruit one and this is pretty much the same you'll find other npcs across the realms that you'll be able to go ahead and utilize now you can swap out its inventory because it will have definitely probably higher level than you or level 16 
But part of the tutorial and part of the requisite for completing this Tower of Power is that you've got to be level 20. So that does mean you're going to have to craft all brand new gear anyway. So it's kind of short lived having this protection unless you really haven't been gathering resources and you're going to be spending the next hour or so getting more stuff. So yeah, it's up to you whether or not you want to swap out. For sure, once you do upgrade your own gear or craft new stuff, Make sure the follower does get your off cast because it will increase its armor and health and then that can mean it can pick you up a lot more often rather than you picking it up. The crucial thing here is though when you put any inventory inside your NPC make sure you auto click for it to be equipped. So many people weren't equipping the tools or weapons and wondering why their NPC wasn't gathering any wood or helping them fight or defend. You do have to click manually for it to all be equipped on each item. At the moment the followers aren't that smart, if you give them a pickaxe and equip it they're not going to swap over to an axe even if you put in their inventory, they'll only just carry on using that pickaxe to get a stone. So if you want an NPC gathering maybe wood, make sure it's got its axe, if you want it gathering stone, make sure it's got a pickaxe. So really if you spend the time playing the game you shouldn't really have to buy too many of these items, but like I said from my experience I realised that you can get a plenty of essence dust just by going ahead and breaking down some rough resources. So it's a lot quicker just to buy a lot of this. And that does mean that you will maybe not get these as unlocks or rewards because you've already got them, but you will get other unlocks. You'll probably get a lot more cards and other items given to you instead. The main ones that you need to buy here are the simple workbench, the simple sewing station and the tannery as they're the three main items that you're going to need to go ahead and craft new armour to increase your level to level 20. So I'm going to place my estate can, it's pretty easy to make and this is obviously becoming my respawn point now. So wherever you place this, this is where you respawn. Not any beds, your beds are simply there to just give you your rest back. Remember you can only have one can on any realm, if you place a second one and you want to change base locations then you do have to go and delete the old one. This is to obviously stop people having multiple home respite realms. Weapons and combat is a little bit iffy sometimes in Nightingale, so think carefully about what playstyle you've got. But basically, a maul is pretty slow. I would say if you're limited on essence, you might want to just stick with an axe or make that the first priority to go ahead and craft a simple axe. But they are powerful mauls, and it's basically the one big melee weapon that you'll have two handed other than a pickaxe or an axe you'll be using a lot. You get chitin from killing locusts and various other bugs and spiders, but the meat and the chitin that you get can be used in exactly the same method or way as you would use meat and hide from other creatures. It's a core component of the game that I've spoken about in other videos, but whatever creature you kill, it's going to have certain benefits. Some might be better at protecting against poison, others are going to give you quicker regen of stamina or maybe more health. So do take early looks at the hide that you're getting from creatures to see what buffs it has. Some crafted items don't carry forward though the attributes that they've got. So if you're making potions and you're using rare ingredients or resources, it won't carry over. The potions are still going to do exactly the same amount of level of health and maybe stamina regen etc. It's only food and armour that will take on some of the buffs and attributes from the creatures that you've killed or plants that you've managed to harvest. Sounds pretty obvious, but if you're going to be making a lot of resources to go ahead and build, making shingles or lots of stone build powder to make ceramic stone later, fortune. then you don't want to be using your there. best yeah. actual oh, gear, yeah. you want to be using the most basic stone. Once you place your can stone, as you can see, Puck gives you some recipes to build your basic buildings. I was being super cheap and I just decided to go ahead and use this tent space. You can even demolish some of these beds and the campfire to give yourself some space, but you will lose some of the resources since you're attacking it because you don't own it to dismantle. But that's worth bearing in mind, you'll come across NPCs much later in the game living in quite opulent buildings and a lot of them buildings can be destroyed and you can gain at least half the resources needed to craft them, so it could be a good way to top up on stuff. Now, quick lesson, but trees and certain other resources do not grow back. That's the whole point of exploring other realms. Eventually, you may farm out a complete whole realm. But there is a spell or an enchantment that you can use later that helps things regrow. So if you deforest a whole area close to your base, don't panic, you will be able to make the trees grow again later. 
So this is the Bastille of Insulet. These can go massive. Some of them might have seven of these plimps that you've got to hit in the right order for it to open up the door to get the actual boon, as well as get obviously the essence, which is the main point of completing these. But you can actually hit them and you can also shoot at them. So if some are gonna be in harder to reach places, often on higher towers, then that's how you can complete them easier. If you're playing with friends and you've built up a lot of essence that you don't necessarily need right now, you can go ahead and drop essence from the infantry menu and your friends can pick it up. You don't lose any of the essence when you die like I mentioned earlier, or at least I think I did. I may be getting confused with another video, but either way, yes, your essence stays on you as does your equipment and your tools that you're holding in your hand. The only things that you do drop are all your items in your inventory bag. The desert is a great place to come to go and get lots of ores because you often find them near the rock formations and it's a lot easier and quicker to see some of these or definitely on top of the plateaus with the rocks. In other biomes like the swamp and the forest, they can be a bit more challenging to find, but you'll also find huge deposits in caves. I think a lot of people will struggle with where to get ore, but don't worry, an ore guide is coming to know exactly where the best places are. The tutorial guides you through all the different bonuses that you get for making sure your crafting benches are on foundations or under cover or near heat or light. But in this early stage, it won't really matter too much. Just go ahead and place them down if you follow my method. Otherwise, if you are building your base, yeah, definitely take a bit more time to make sure you're getting all the correct traits as it speeds up the process of refinement. Augments, which you'll find later, also help with this, and they're basically decoration pieces that have specific uses with different crafting benches that can either also unlock recipes and increase the refinement time. You can see all the black icons, that's what they are. They're all the ones that match them particular crafting benches. So any augments will have the little tannery sign on them symbol, and you know to place them close enough to the tanning station, and there should be some green little lines indicating that it's close enough and it's connected. So now you can go ahead and craft things like leather and make sure that you get the rest of your gear upgraded. I think you need about four pieces. It's better off going for certainly your gloves, your boots and your hat as that only requires one piece of leather, I do believe, compared to some of the other stuff that needs two. I would suggest though that you definitely get all of your gear upgraded to level 20 before you attempt this site of power. Now the Abeyance Realm is the only place that you'll actually have a lot of these barriers. I don't think they exist on a lot of the other areas that you explore in the other realms. So it's really just to guide you and educate you on what you should be completing. But do look out for secret little chests that you'll find in all of these dungeons. You'll often find them in secret staircases. Although this particular temple is pretty unique to the Abeyance Realm, the ones that you'll normally come to explore on dungeons will be quite different. The bound are pretty much weak to headshots, nearly every single band in this little selection. If you aim for their heads, especially these guys on their lights, you can see the gold numbers popping up and that means you're hitting with a critical hit right on their weak spot. Utilise the block function and the ability to push enemies as well. Something that people have been misunderstanding is the strength score. The strength score is meant to determine whether or not you can interrupt enemies. Some complaints have said that enemies don't necessarily react to you hitting them sometimes. Well, that means because they've just got a larger strength score than you. As you progress and unlock new gear, your strength score increases. And if your strength score is large enough, when facing against enemies, you can disrupt them from hitting you, etc. So if you do find that you're getting owned quite quickly, always learn to block and make sure you maybe put some effort into finding gear that can increase your blocking efficiency. And there's one of them hidden chests that I mentioned. The bound really can be sidestepped in most cases, although here it's pretty narrow, but definitely aim for the heads as much as possible. You will find a spell again later on that can reveal the weaknesses of creatures. Not all creatures are going to be weak on their heads, or they may have other places too. In fact, it's part of a quest line when you meet a certain NPC to kill certain creatures on their weak spots or their heart. Some of the more challenging bound are the guys with the big, big swords. They tend to wreck and do a lot of damage if they manage to get a hit in, and they're pretty fast moving. This is where you want to be a bit more patient and make sure that you are blocking. Also, a pickaxe is great as it does do usually a lot more damage than an axe, but you do have to get a lot closer and you do have slower swings. There'll be lots of ways that you can create custom gear resistant to the miasma. That's what that red cloud is. That does quite a bit of damage to you sometimes. 
if you're getting swarmed obviously try and get out there and recuperate but also make sure that your npc is always alive if you do both go down you are going to have to respawn and it can be a bit of an arse coming back even the proest of nightingale players with over 85 hours in the preview already sometimes mess up so you do get a death debuff it does run out on its own however if you're quick enough it basically stops your inventory from being halved that's the supposed to be anyway so do check that on the bottom left if you're wondering why all of a sudden if you restocked on gear you can't carry as much also look out for trying to use your umbrella in certain places as it seemed like they nerfed the ability here or maybe there was just a bit of a bug don't forget if you're finding some enemies just too tough to deal with you can always make that realm slightly easier when creating it you just have to load up the same cards again and then hopefully choose this time to make it a bit easier but it's a balanced realm if things are too hard just make sure you go back and craft better gear or get yourself a dedicated weapon or range gear i have noticed a few people complaining that they couldn't get past certain points in this particular tower so pretty much at the end of all of these special little dungeons in the Abeyance Realm, you will find a mini boss that you'll have to fight. And these are automatons. Normally you only find these creatures in the desert landscape. They'll be roaming around with some minions and are certainly not as tough as these souped up mini bosses. It's fairly obvious where this guy's critical point is. It is indeed that orb. You do have to be careful. It emits a huge amount of damage with its fire ray, and that can literally down and obliterate you in one hit. Also, has a pretty devastating slash attack with its sword, where it can jump quite a few feet. So use the pillars to your advantage. Keep picking up your follower so he can pick you up. Otherwise, you will have to run back into the temple all the way from your respite cairn. Another reason why I placed it right outside, just in case I'd have to run back in rather than go across the whole map. Later on you'll find that some bosses and mini bosses might regain their health if you leave it too long. So don't dawdle around, try and get back to your stuff as quick as possible and pick up your loot that should be in a box where it dropped. I have a bit of luck and maybe being a bit more powered than I was, like I said I only had 4 pieces maybe equipped to level 20, if you get all of them done and maybe use a better axe you'll certainly have an easier time. You could use the slingshot which uses just a lot of rocks as ammo so that's pretty good and then defeated pick up your rewards, loads of essence and continuation with puck. You should now get more locations to go and explore, namely how to travel to another realm. Pretty much the tutorial will guide you through crafting the cards to make your first antiquarian realm and particularly to go to the forest. Make sure you talk to the NPCs outside and always return to NPCs. You might have to keep track of where they are so make sure you label any portals or put baskets in front of them as you can rename pretty much all storage. There will be more NPCs that will have side missions for you to go and do where you can unlock rewards including a gun. But these will be found on later realms not here. Top tip, end game, a little bit spoilerish here, has you relying on lots of your tools to make some of the cards. So don't go ahead and dismantle any of your crude axes, pickaxes, or any rubbish old ones that you and your team may have made, as they will come in handy and it'll just save you a few resources. Dump them in a box for probably about 40 hours and then hopefully come back and start using them. So I've bought everything from this trader, I don't need to come back to buy any gear and I'm pretty much done, you don't really have to return and that's the whole point of Nightingale. There is no perfect base location because the maps can be procedurally generated even if they do look somewhat similar sometimes. It's all about unlocking the mini portals as that will really help you get from realm to realm without having to travel all the way across the map. So I destroyed some of this stuff that was already here to get some extra resources Destroyed my cairn stone as well and then used the trick of respawning or at the respite and this took me back to the middle of the map where I first spawned. And then literally put my small four foundation base to put all the crafting stations I would need to get a bit more prepared before going into the next realm. There is a bit of back and forth, you won't be going to the next realm and staying there, it's level 40, you will need to do a lot more work here but you do need to go and visit to talk to the next NPC and progress more of the story. This is also how you unlock the upgrade bench and you'll learn about using different essences to upgrade your gear. These larger fey portals do close and so you may have to use cards again to go to a different realm. But remember, if you want to go back home, all you have to do is click on your respite realm. But it should be open for a little while, just enough to you talk to the NPC and go back into the abeyance. 
And that's pretty much it. Work towards getting a simple set of tools, a simple set of clothing. That should put you definitely a lot higher in terms of level. And hopefully you'll be good enough to start exploring the antiquarian forest, building up your tier one essence to go ahead and upgrade one of your tools. Remember, you can move any base piece that you want as long as it's not supporting another, specifically crafting benches. You can dismantle them to get their resources back. Last thing I would say is though, be careful when auto filling, make sure you're not filling it with your best ingots. You may want to do it manually or make sure that the best stuff is in another chest and you're using the most basic resources to craft these benches as there's no extra effect by using the best ingredients. My plan is to make the antiquarian forest my actual home respite realm from proper as I feel like it's gonna have better benefits in gathering lots of the tier one essence which you'll need over and over again. You can break down essence, the higher tiers, into essence dust so you really start not needing to worry about essence dust especially as you can still go ahead and just break down any common resource so i didn't want to be stuck in an abeyance realm picking up resources with only a slight chance of getting essence dust when i could be getting tier one essence by moving to the next realm and making that my first proper realm and there we go, a good 30 minutes nearly of gameplay showing you how to survive in your first three hours, I would say, of Nightingale. Of course, it will take longer to go and unlock a lot of them other realms, the higher card ones like the Astrolabe, the Provisional Realms, the Hunt Realm and Gloom. But that's all coming in another video. Until next time, Ratbags, thanks again for inflection to in sponsoring this video. And I'll see you, Ratbags, for more guides and tutorials, especially live streaming on my Twitch channel. Until next time, bye-bye.